merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we are celebrating the fourth Sunday of Easter. And today is World Day of Prayer for Vocations to the Priesthood and the religious life. So in a humble way, let us offer our prayers for our seminarians of the diocese and all over the world, and for all who are in religious formation that Christ our Lord may strengthen them, lead them, and guide them to their call to be agents of evangelization in his name. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are saying to hear the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth is to be full of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. ever-living God, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, 
and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall, shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate, is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the sheep calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of the strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not listen to them. 
I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and to slaughter and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, greetings and love to you all. And today we celebrate the first the fourth Sunday. We celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. On this Sunday, we are all called upon as Catholics to offer humble prayers for vocations to the priesthood and also vocations to religious life. But most important today, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate the Sunday of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. You know, Jesus has many titles, and many of these titles are given him by us. For example, we call him the Messiah. We call him our friend. There are more modern names, I'm sure, or titles that we give to Jesus Christ. But this title of Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, he gave it to himself. Jesus Christ himself said, I'm the Good Shepherd. It's not us who gave him this title. This title does not seem to be so prestigious as we know people have titles. For example, we have prestigious titles in the church, like we call the Holy Father, His Holiness the Pope. We call our bishop uh, the Most Reverend. We call our priest, Reverend Father, Monsignor, whatever. All these titles are so prestigious. But the title Jesus calls himself as Good Shepherd is not prestigious at all. But at the same time, it is such a, a powerful title that depicts a person of great love, a shepherd of great love for his flock, for his sheep. The state of good shepherd depicts a person with so much care for his round. It is a title that implies that he is ready and always ready to sacrifice himself for his own. It is a title that depicts the dedication that Jesus Christ has for us, we, his flock. And so this title comes on this fourth Sunday of Easter to remind us again and to take us back to who Jesus Christ is, who has risen from the dead, what can we call him? Many titles, but today he gives us this one of shepherd, which kind of carries all that Jesus has gone through and where he's leading us to the Father after his resurrection. And when we look at Jesus, the risen Lord, truly he has all these attributes of a good shepherd because he became one like us, Lord himself, 
to become like us for his love for us. He died on the cross for us and he has risen to bring us all to the Father as one flock and he, the good shepherd. And so in the gospel of today, we have heard he himself called himself the gate. The good shepherd, he says, is also the gate. And he says, whoever enters through him will be saved. Whoever enters through Jesus Christ the gate will be saved. I think we all know a gate. Or let's even call it the door or an entrance if a gate is too complicated for us. Every house has a door. Your house has a door. The bank, where we go for our monies, although these days we do drive through, have doors. Our church has three doors, the main one facing north, and then we have one towards the west and another one to the east. But as we know, normally it is through these doors, you know, called gates, to call them entrances. It is through the door that we access the house. There is no way we can enjoy the beauty of our house, the good setting of furniture and everything. There is no way we can enjoy the comfort in our houses unless we go through the door. Otherwise, we shall look at the house with nice flowers around in this spring as we come into it. We can enjoy the beautiful windows of the house, look at the sidings or bricks, but it's only through the door that we can access truly the beauty and the comfort of any house. There are many people who talk about our church. They say it is a beautiful church with a Catholic look, and it is true. Traditional, yeah, I agree with you. But how do we access this scenery of the beautiful church of St. Patrick's? It is also through the doors. It's through the doors. We cannot access this beauty through coming by the roof. No, it is through the three doors that we have, west, east, and the main door. And so the door, what Jesus calls the gate today, what we can call the entrance, a small part of the building is such an important, essential, and central part of the building. It is so important that without it, we cannot reach the riches and the wonders, the comfort, and everything that we need from a church, from our own house, or access the bank. By the way, even our cars. You know, that's why always we need the key. Open the door, not the trunk as we travel. So if we cannot access our car through the door, then what use is the door? What use is the car for? So that is how central, <clears throat> important the door is. And Jesus tells us today that is the door is the gate. 
So Jesus, in other words, is very central and very important for us and for our salvation. It's only through him that we can reach the Father. Remember, when we are doing the prayer of consecration, what we call the Eucharistic prayer, we end it with these words, through him and with him and in him. Of course, we continue in the unity of the Holy Spirit, meaning that all this that we are doing, our prayer, our humility, we bring it to the Father through Jesus Christ and with him and in him. That's how central Jesus Christ is in our lives, that he is the bridge, to use another word, but of course let's stick to the door. Jesus is the true entrance to the riches and the blessings from God for our salvation. So if we want to go to heaven, if we want to be united with the Father in heaven, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, is the sure gate, is the sure entrance, the sure means, the sure bridge that can bring us to the Father. And I'm sure of us would love to come to the Father and see the one who created us and the one who loves us. If you want to keep away from the Father, can't imagine somebody, maybe there can be someone who thinks hell may be better. You know, they say there is a lot of fire in hell and uh, at this time there are speculations that the more heat you have in your body, the less you are prone to coronavirus. <laughs> so somebody may prefer hell, I don't know who, at least not me, to have more heat in order to keep away the coronavirus. I give you a go ahead. But Christ is the way to the Father. Christ is the gate. Christ is the bridge. Jesus Christ today also told us something about the Good Shepherd. That the sheep hear his voice. They recognize his voice. And they cannot recognize the voice of a stranger or a thief or a robber. The sheep, the flock, me and you, recognize the voice of Jesus. And I believe, my dear friends, that these all past weeks, they are becoming many now, of the, the lockdown with less traffic, not even hearing the planes in the space, little distraction, except for me where I live, the train still goes. But I believe these, these days of quiet have been an, opportun an opportunity for each one of us to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd without being overshadowed by the noise of this world. Jesus Christ has not been silent. Jesus Christ has continued and will continue to speak to us, to whisper to us sometimes. So it is our duty to pay attention. Even when the world, our society comes to no more, amidst the many voices, the many sounds, it is our duty to listen to the voice of Christ, to listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, who directs our thoughts and our actions. Let us always ask ourselves, 
What is the good shepherd telling me today? What is the good shepherd saying about my lifestyle? What's the good shepherd saying about my family? And what is the good shepherd telling me about my Christian community? The Lord be with you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father through all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious piled, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us together as one flock and with one voice place our trust in our loving God and offer him our prayers. For Pope Francis, may God bless him with continued health, vitality, and wisdom in his ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Jesus' example of servant leadership assist them in their efforts in solving the most difficult challenges in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the coronavirus pandemic throughout the world, may God's healing hand and the spread of the disease be halted and that many lives may be spared. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your protection and grace, for all medical professionals who are courageously treating those infected with coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this World Day of Prayer for Vocations, that teens and young people will truly consider a vocation to priesthood or religious life, and for all priests and religious you have served our, who have served our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they be welcomed safely home this day by Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Jean Lamboley and for the First Sunday Mass Association and special intention for Ruby Gunkel, who the Masses this weekend are offered for. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your personal intentions that you hold deep within your heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, and your beloved Son, our Good Shepherd, bids us to follow his voice 
hear the prayers we offer to you today and we ask you to grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me. For my sin. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find light in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal of constant at work within us may be the cause of unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is true, right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation he showed himself the priest the altar and the lamb of sacrifice therefore overcome with paschal joy every land and every people exult in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as the acclaim holy Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the raising of the sun to his setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on us, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Kevin our Bishop, the other old bishops, and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, at the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the earth all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, 
Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Hallelujah. Prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you.
the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit remain in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thy prince of the heavenly host, and by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Dear friends, I wish you a wonderful Sunday of the Good Shepherd. And I think most of you have already followed what our governor has said about, you know, the first phase of lifting the lockdown. Uh, we are waiting for our bishop to interpret and adapt this to our own situation. I'm sure we shall see something different. Let's just keep our you know, hands closed and wait for what the bishop has to tell us. Grateful to you for your patience. Grateful to you for keeping safe and for remaining with family and for thinking about St. Patrick's. The party tells me all the messages you send. I receive your own messages of thanks about these uh, video recorded masses. Our secretary party tells me your continued love and support of our parish. I can't thank you enough. Again, you know, after these masses, I like to to say something. Uh, in this the conversation I have for my greeting, I always wait at the door to greet you. So I give you a story, and I have a small story today. In a southern parish, very anonymous, I will not mention the name. There was, a, of course, a priest, the pastor. And then in that parish, there was a, a very, very devout and pious lady was always at mass doing prayers very devoted very good exemplary lady lady also in the same parish was a, a man kind of young very nominal baptized catholic but uh, he didn't bother much about prayer he really liked to enjoy his life and to go on with life. Very relaxed, real at mass. Prayer was too difficult for him. And so in that parish, it so happened that the priest passed. He died and he was buried. Then after a few years, that devout lady, very pious, very wonderful lady, also passed. And she was also buried. And after some time, the young man, or that other man, also passed. And he was also buried. Now the story goes like this that this last one to die, the carefree man who did not mind much about prayer, about God, just nominal Catholic, baptized, and that's so. That when he went, he was sent to hell. But what surprised him was that as he entered hell, then he saw the woman who was very pious. Of course, this woman was not expected to be there. 
she should have been in heaven, but that's why she was anyway. We do not know God's ways. So he saw this woman, and of course he was surprised. He said, hey, mom, why are you here? You're not, you're not supposed to be here. I deserve to be here, but you're not supposed to be here. What happened? <laughs> and then the lady looked at him and said, oh, my son, just speak slowly. Because do you know what? Our past is also around here. I just saw him around here. So, <laughs> I don't know what to say about this joke, but certainly the Lord will reward us with heaven. Today we reflected on the Good Shepherd. He's the only one who can lead us to heaven. Probably not our works. We do try our best. We pray, we do what? But we have learned about the gate. We have learned about the bridge. Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, is the one to lead us to heaven. And we pray that one time, all of us, shall be before the Father in heaven, through him, with him, and in him, our good shepherd. God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, I'm Joe Nicolosi. I uh, was the St. Patrick's Knights of Columbus, Council 13971, and we are going to do the drawing for the TV, which we would have done on uh, uh, Saint Pat at the St. Patrick's Day party. We're going to do it today because we don't feel like we can wait any longer. We'd like to give special thanks to Kaleidoscope Flooring, uh, 1610 Cook Road, for donating uh, the, the, the TV and um, allowing us to send all of our proceeds to Miss Virginia House. Miss Virginia House is a, is a noted home downtown, a, a food pantry downtown that takes care of uh, many people every year and was even visited by uh, Mother Teresa at one point. So oh, yeah. um, we would like to have Father Tad um, draw the winning ticket. Well, my job here is very simple to pick the ticket of the winner of the TV. And uh, I'm going to do that. Thank you. is coming <laughs> and there I do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen who's this I do not know Let me dig deep Ticket is Patty Denahan. Oh! <laughs> Congratulations. Patty Denahan, our secretary. Congratulations, Patty. <laughs> Isn't this interesting? Yep, it's very good. Wow! It was impartial. I watched the whole thing. Patty, congratulations. <laughs> we would also like to thank all the people, all the parishioners who bought tickets to this. And, uh, and we thank you for your continued support in everything that, that we do in the Knights of Columbus. So thank you very much.